I'm Robin Boston, and today I'm going to read you from Ephesians 4, 1 through 8, from a woman's lectionary for the whole world by Wilda Gaffney. I exhort you all, I, prisoner for the Savior, to walk worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, doing your best to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Redeemer, one faith, one baptism, one God and parent of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Yet each of us was given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Therefore it is said, when God ascended on high, she took captivity captive. She gave gifts to her people. May we hear the word wisdom in the words. Thanks be to God. Hi, if the children will come join me up here, right in front of Miss Amy, come on up. Children in age or in attitude, come on up. So my name is Jennifer, and when I was looking at the scripture that Miss Robin just read, I thought, well, who do I know that is one with me and who I love very much and who is in fact my kin that's very different. Well, that would be my sister. My sister and I are very different and we've always been very different. And when we were young, like maybe you guys' age, I would love to spend time in her room at home. She did not enjoy me being in her room at home and she would lock the door so that I couldn't get in her room. And then later, we both played in the band, right? So we both did that, but she played the trumpet and I played the drums. So we were very different, but we were together creating music together on the, on the marching band field during football games. And then we went to college. She went up to the mountains of South Carolina at Furman, and then I went down to the coast here. That's how I ended up here. So opposite ends, we couldn't be further away from each other in schools and in actual geography. And then she moved all the way to Hawaii, right? So she could as far west as I can imagine. And I'm still here on the East Coast. So west and east, like in that uh, hymn we just sang. And then about 10 years ago, she moved back here. And it turns out we're like the best buddies, but we're totally different from each other. I really enjoy taking pictures. She really enjoys painting pictures. So we're very different. She enjoys tofu. I do not enjoy tofu, but we are connected by kin and by love through all these miles we've been separated, for much of our lives we were separated, but we still are together in the kingdom and in the love. So let's say a little prayer. Oh, one more thing. I come here to experience church, and she's online experiencing church, okay? Because she doesn't live near here. She lives down in St. Helena. So for my sister Cheryl and I, let's say a prayer about love. Dear Creator, please hold us in the one thing we all have in common, and that is your love and our love. Amen. All right, so if you're going to the uh, children's church, uh, I'll walk you over there. Uh, if, you're, if it's your first time, bring your grown-up with you, and if not, just come on, okay?
Paul's letter to the Ephesians is divided into two parts. The first part focuses on the church's responsibility to bring Jesus' message of unity to the world, our unity with one another and our unity with God. The second part of that letter sketches what each member of the church must do if the church is to succeed in its mission. Robin just read us the first eight chapters of that section. Essentially, Paul is saying here that each individual member must bring her or his talents to the church, for only then can the church become one and fulfill its responsibility to the world. I'd like us to pause now for a few moments so that each one of us can consider what part we are playing in our church's success and whether we're doing enough. Oh God, we have failed again, all of us, each of us. We have not lived up to the highest that we know, and much of the time we haven't even tried. God, please forgive us and help us to give ourselves for the past shortcomings so that we can face the future unencumbered by our failures, failures that we can't do anything about now. We don't expect to be perfect, God. We humans are not built to be perfect, but we can be better persons today than we were yesterday, and we can use our talents to serve you better today than we did yesterday. Please help us, look for your guidance, expect to see it, and when we see it, act on it, beginning now. We pray this within your nature and for your sake. Amen.
Thank you, choir. <laughs> and good morning again, everybody. It's good to see some of you that slipped in. You're welcome anytime. Today's teaching is going to be a type of zooming out exercise. So I want to start with a story about me that likely many of you relate to, and then I want us to zoom out from there. So I come from a family of misfits, of people who don't fit in. My very American Southern-born grandparents moved to Chile in 1943 to work as missionaries. Their five children were all born in Chile. They grew up going to school with Chilean kids and spoke Spanish since they were small. But their light skin and light hair made them stand out a lot. They were all called gringos, and though they eventually moved to the U.S. as adults, they still wear that label with pride. It always makes me chuckle when my very American-looking mom speaks her impeccable Spanish or Portuguese that she learned later, later to a native speaker of either language. They are surprised with a bit of cognitive dissonance. She doesn't look like someone who would be able to speak their language so fluently with perfect accent. My story has another layer of complexity. I was born in Brazil to this biologically American mom who spoke Spanish and felt like a Chilean culturally. But I was born to a Brazilian father who was 100% Brazilian. And until I was 10 years old, I felt like a 100% Brazilian kid who just happened to have a mom who was called a gringa, even in Brazil. Then we moved to the US, and my identity confusion continued. Fast forward to the present day, and part of me feels very Brazilian, but part of me also feels very American. Part of me feels very comfortable in a Spanish-speaking country, but in no place do I feel like all of my parts belong. Now, I know this is not unique to my family. Many of us, in one way or another, have parts of ourselves that don't feel like they quite belong in certain contexts. Perhaps it is your political views in your family of origin or in your neighborhood. Perhaps it is your sexual identity in your family or in your workplace. Perhaps it is your religious belief in the larger label of Christianity in America. Perhaps you are differently abled in a, and find yourself in a difficult to navigate environment. Perhaps you have a medical diagnosis that makes you feel all alone. Perhaps it is something else that I haven't even thought of about you that makes you feel like a minority in our society. In a world where you are either this or that, there doesn't seem to be much room for those who do not exactly fit this or that. But if everyone was honest, I think we would see that these dualistic categories that our society upholds don't fit many people at all. None of us are 100% this or that. So now I'd like to zoom out a little bit more from ourselves and our different parts and tell you about three different people whose paths I crossed this year in my travels. It was an unusual year for me because I ended up traveling to three different countries, but, and I'm still trying to process all that I have learned. While in London for a week, I've shared here before that my family, we lost all of our luggage for a few days. We had only the clothes we had been wearing on a long trip. And though our Airbnb had a tiny washer-dryer combo, if any of you has ever been to Europe, those things take forever to dry. It's not the same. And we just couldn't walk around without clothes on while our clothes were washing. So I became pretty desperate for clean clothes, at least to sleep in. 
Long story short, I went looking for a place to buy a shirt late in the evening, but everything was closed, except for one shop about two blocks away from the Airbnb where we were staying. The tiny shop catered mostly to Muslim women with very modest clothing. The young woman working at the shop seemed surprised that I came in. I explained my situation and she threw herself into helping me. She helped me find a beautiful long shirt to wear and she and I exchanged pleasantries and I learned that she was from Bangladesh. I don't remember her name, but for the next few days, every time we walked by her shop window, we would wave at each other. And on the day that my family and I finally walked by rolling our suitcases that had been found, she did a little cheer for us. Jumping now to Ethiopia, the country where my children are from, we spent a week there and at part, in, for part of the trip, we stayed in a remote lodge in the mountains. Our accommodations were traditional huts scattered on the hillside property. And there was a narrow path that would take us from our living quarters to uh, the dining hall. As I was walking between the huts one morning, I was surprised by cattle. I was surprised because they were really, really quiet and I just didn't expect to run into a bunch of cows on my way to breakfast. There were about eight of them just munching on the grass and a very small person leaning on a staff. I could not tell his age. He may have been as young as 12 or somewhere in his late 20s. He smiled at me and I went on. But something about his silence, his patience with the cows. I saw him later that day in a different part, just sitting there quietly watching the cows. His life so different from mine. It made me remember him. And now let's go to Brazil, where in Rio, I went up to see the iconic Jesus statue for the breathtaking views. And to get to the top, you, have to, you can take a train that goes straight up. And the train cart felt like a little United Nations. I was delighted to hear and try to pick out all the different languages that I heard being spoken around me. At the top of the train, I took a selfie with the train in the background just to show the incline of the train. And many of these fellow travelers ended up in the background of my photo. Now I tell you these stories to illustrate a word that I learned recently, maybe you already know it, but it is the word sonder. Excuse me. Now sonder is the feeling one has on realizing that every individual one sees has a life as full and as real as one's own, in which they are the central character and others, including ourselves, have secondary or insignificant roles. So the shopkeeper from Bangladesh living in London, the young shepherd in Ethiopia, or the various strangers from all over the world in my photo from Brazil, all of them have a life as rich and as full and as real as yours and mine. And we each have a part to play in each other's lives, even if it's just a blur in a photograph or a mention in a story. All of us humans are inextricably connected in ways that we haven't even begun to understand. Which leads to our final zooming out. While in Brazil, I took a long day excursion on a small boat with about 10 people to go from secluded island to secluded island off the coast of Brazil between Rio and Sao Paulo. Now, because of the small islands and the mountains jutting out of the water, it kept the waves from coming, so there were no waves and the water was crystal clear. The sun was out and it was not too hot. It was a glorious day. 
And each time we reached one of the islands, one of our many destinations, my boatmates would get out and swim to the beach because the water was too cold for them. But I've been living up here and I love cold water, so I would swim out to deeper water and just float. Sometimes I would float face down and look at the fish. Sometimes I would fo float face up. And at one point, I noticed that from my floating position, I could see the ocean, I could see the land, I could see the mountains, I could see the sky, I could see the clouds and the sun, all without having to move my head. I was overtaken by an overwhelming sense of oneness and belonging that can still overwhelm me today. It was clear to me as I floated in the ocean that the ocean, the mountains, the sky, they were all one. They all belonged to each other, and I belonged to them. And for one of the few times in my life, I felt that the Brazilian part of me was fully alive without me having to give up the American part of me. All of my separate parts were fully alive. I knew the ocean I was floating in was the same ocean that touches our low country coast. At that point in my trip, my mind was already switching between English and Portuguese. These disparate parts of me were mingled into one. And I knew in my body that I did not owe an explanation to anyone about who I was. I wasn't half Brazilian, half American. I was fully Brazilian and fully American all at once. These dis divisions didn't seem to make sense anymore. I felt that everything belonged, both the parts within me and everything outside of me. I felt, as John O'Donohue so poetically describes, the human face as an icon cast against the wilderness of nature, where the face is a threshold where the world looks out and looks in on itself. The face brings these two worlds together. And behind each human face is a hidden world that no one can see. I loved his words, behind each human face. We are the portal through which the world looks out and through which the world looks in on itself. Though each of us has a hidden world that no one can see, hidden parts that we are not sure sometimes fit, we all meet at that threshold of seer and seen, of individual and collective, of separate and belonging, of many parts and of whole. We are, as it says in Ephesians, one body and one spirit. Separation is an illusion. All of who we are belongs. Good, bad, accepted, hidden, understood or not. We belong to one another and we belong to the same life-giving spirit that flows within us and between us. Today, we will gather around the communion table in a circle, in that beautiful symbol of oneness, at that table where all of our parts are welcome, and all of us, no matter who we are, belong. Friends, I invite you to float, to bask in the knowledge that you belong that all of the parts who make you who you are belong. You are being held and supported by a oneness that holds you, that holds all of us, and that joins all of us together. Amen. and join me for our next hymn.
This is the time in our service where we collect the offering, and you may give by dropping something in the offering plates that are going to come around or through our church app or website. The money we collect will be used to support our church, which is a house of welcome for all, and to further our work for peace and justice in our community and wider world. It is in that spirit that you are invited to give. And this is the time in our service where you are invited to share any concerns or celebrations with the congregation. Uh, our service is live right now, but later on when it is posted, the, these comments will be deleted. So if you have something, please raise your hand and Skip will bring you the microphone. Here at Circular Church, all are invited to the table. You are invited no matter your beliefs, your age, your gender identity, or your race. What we say at the beginning of each service is even more true here at the table. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. It is even more true at this table because this is not our table. It is God's table, lavishly set for you, for me, for all. It is in this spirit of welcome that we invite those of you online to gather your own communion elements from whatever you may have at hand. And those of you on site, we're gonna invite you in a moment to gather in a circle we usually gather on the outside of the sanctuary, but since this is Labor Day and we're a little thinner crowd, or not tomorrow's Labor Day, uh, we're gonna gather around these two pews, uh, these two sets of pews on the inside circle. And being mindful of the fact that we welcome everybody with every kind of body, you may remain seated if you need, and we will bring you communion. Additionally, we will reserve the chairs in the back against the walls as spaces, spaces to welcome those who would be more comfortable seated in our circle. 
and we will wait to complete the circle in the back until everyone who wants to sit or stand has had a time to find their place. And we offer gluten-free crackers and juice as an expression of our welcome. Let us gather in our circle. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Generous one, bless this communion meal. Bless the earth that has given us life. Bless the elements from the earth that are gathered in these simple gifts. As we share this meal, may we remember our connection to those gathered here today, to all of our kin on this planet, and to all who have been here before. We remember our connection to Jesus, who taught us the way of love through this meal. May we, fed by your gifts, leave here filled and ready to share in that spirit. Amen. So among friends gathered around the table, Jesus took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it and said, Take this, eat. It is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Let us eat this, remembering our commitment to live as Jesus taught us.
Later during the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he said, in this cup is a new relationship with God made possible because of my life. Take this, all of you, to remember me. Let us drink together as an act of deep gratitude. And now that we have been fed this meal of community and of love and of oneness, let us pass the peace to one another, remembering that the peace that we pass is both easy to say but hard to do. Let us pass the peace to one another. <laughs> 